This chat about environmental health is a component of community and public health nursing. We're going to talk about the situation with the environment, and we're going to talk about our role as nurses as it pertains to environmental health. There are two learning goals for this lesson. First, to describe the impact of, of the environment on health, and then to explain the role of the nurse related to environmental health. So let's get into it. The environment includes the physical environment, including geographic location, the buildings, the air, the land, but it can also be the social environment, which includes things like crime rates, access to resources, prevalent racism, and proximity to industrial buildings. The epidemiologic triangle explains this relationship between the agent, like a virus or a uh, like a virus or a bacteria, the host, which is typically us, and the environment itself, and how they're really interconnected. So, environmental impacts can be natural, chemical, pollutants, workplace environmental exposures, and things like infectious diseases. So, let's talk about each one of these separately. Natural environmental impacts can be things like sun exposure, extreme temperatures, and natural disasters. And with climate change and global warming, we're seeing more and more of these types of um, extreme temperatures, natural disasters in our communities, and um, disaster preparedness is one aspect of community and public health. The second area is household. There are a number of uh, toxins and pollutants and uh, poisons that can be located in housing from cleaning solutions to things like lead in the water or from lead paint, asbestos and mold, rodents and insects, and again, household products that can be toxic, especially if they get into your eyes or if they're ingested. Remember the poison control number 1-800-222-1222 is always available to guide both families and individuals as well as healthcare providers through an accidental or intentional overdose. Pollution can have an impact on our health. Things like air pollutants, water pollutants, or pollutants in the soil. And as we look at pollutants, we can think about impacts to things like asthma um, and having healthy drinking water. Workplace exposures can include things like healthcare workers being exposed to dirty needles, and people who work in factories who might be exposed to different chemicals, physical labor, which can cause physical ailments such as back pain, Remember, OSHA is the federal agency that oversees workplace safety to ensure that workers have a safe place to be. Infectious diseases is another environmental impact. Things like pandemics and bioterrorism are environmental Im impacts related to infectious agents. So what is our role in the environment and how that impacts health? There's four things that nurses are responsible for. We need to assess, protect, advocate, and prevent. One way that community and public health nurses assess is through an environmental assessment. And this is really looking for any hazards in the environment that may cause illness or uh, harm to a patient. And I prepare is a mnemonic that can be used for an environmental hazard assessment. I prepare stands for investigate potential exposures, Present work means what's the patient actually involved in now and what kind of things are they maybe exposed to in their job. Residence means check out the home. Environmental concerns in the area. P stands for past work. Um, what kind of work have they done in the past that could impact their health today? Activities, what are they into doing? Um, uh, for example, if they like to do a lot of landscaping, are they working with a lot of chemicals on the weekends? Um, R stands for referrals and resources, making sure we're, we're resourcing and educating um, our clients about any environmental hazards and risks they may have and how to protect themselves from those. Speaking of protection, there's a number of things that we can encourage our patients to do, and that includes things like personal protective equipment, PPE as appropriate, avoiding being part of secondhand smoke, and this is especially important to counsel parents with children. Um, extreme weather protection, pest abatement, educating parents about storing household products safely and away from children, and screenings for things like blood lead levels. Prevention of environmental hazards can include things like educating about community safety, car seats, seat belts, immunizations, smoke alarms, drowning, sun exposures, making sure patients get their immunizations, 
and doing actions to combat climate change. So things like biking to work, recycling, re using reusable water bottles, composting, and avoiding single-use plastic all help contribute to the world that we live in and make it a healthier environment. Finally, advocacy. We can advocate at the local, state, and federal level on environmental policies that will be good for our environment as well as for our health. And this includes things like clean energy and making sure that there are resources for natural disaster support. It really is up to all of us to do our part to make sure that the world we live in is a good place for the next generation. And as nurses, we have an extra responsibility for advocating for the environmental health, not only for us, but our patients as well. Thanks for listening. And as always, you are smart, you are capable, you are loved, and you got this. I'll see you next time.